Hi, I'm Dick Eit with Bites by Eit. We have a catering company out of Atlanta, Georgia, and we travel up and down the eastern seaboard to New York, Connecticut, Nantucket, Florida. And last week we did a bridal shower and rehearsal dinner in Crossville, Tennessee. Today we're going to go back out to Snohomish, Washington, and do uh, two fishes from my brother's restaurant, Rogers River View Bistro. We're going to do a halibut with a tomato vinaigrette, and then we're going to do a salmon with an artichoke tartare. So let's begin. And then to finish it off, we'll do a pear and arugula salad with a fresh lemon juice vinaigrette. So let's begin making the sauces. So we'll start with the tomatoes. These are nice uh, vine ripened tomatoes. I like them because they're a little bit tight. They're very sweet and fragrant and uh, easy to use. And they look nice. They're so red, they look great on the plate. We'll just cut these into small little pieces, enough to put on to garnish the fish. Uh, with the white fish like a halibut, a nice red uh, always looks good. I'll do another one, I guess. It has pretty good meat to it. Not that many seeds. And in the market, these look the best. So many a time when I shop, I buy what looks good. And if I need to improvise and change products, you know, you have a little bit of latitude. You can move things to whatever looks uh, and smells the best and the freshest. So I try to make the menus to, uh, to capture the best foods of the season. And uh, if I need to change, you know, during the COVID, uh, it wouldn't be unusual that I couldn't find basic staples. I couldn't find uh, shredded mozzarella cheese. I couldn't find goat cheese. I couldn't find filet mignon. A lot of things you just couldn't do. So lamb chops or lamb chop lollipops you couldn't find. So I'd say it's getting a lot better now. But for a while there, it was a little bit uh, hit or miss. I would go to uh, two, three, sometimes four stores in order to uh, try to figure out what I can do. Okay, the tomatoes will make a vinaigrette. I'll start with, uh, I'm gonna use a little red wine vinegar just to start with, and then some lemon juice I always like uh, fresh lemon juice. Try not to get any seeds in there. I think the lemon juice really creates a nice um, freshness to any kind of salad. Okay. Um, I think adding a little uh, whole grain mustard always works well. And a little pepper. If you wanted to add some fresh garlic, you could do that. I wouldn't, just because, you know, it's sort of like spices. If you make a dish and you make it too spicy, uh, a lot of people won't like it. So I always, I always go with the lowest common denominator, and that is less spice. Make our vinaigrette, emulsify it, and there's our vinaigrette. Pretty simple and easy, right? Clean as you go. Put this off to the side. Get a container for the tomatoes. We have that good to go. Artichokes. When I uh, mix this up, I want to have, they don't want to be pulverized. I'll use more of the uh, hearts, but I want to have little pieces in there. Some mayonnaise. A couple tablespoons. Capers. And since we're using capers, we really don't have to use any salt, I don't think. A little cayenne pepper. Put that in my hand. So don't put too much in there. A little bit of Old Bay's. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. 
and some garlic, garlic lemon salt. Mostly garlic. Not too much on the salt. Okay, put this on. I'll go for a chop. I'll alternate it. I don't want to do a grind. Take a look so you can see the consistency. It's a very rough cut and that's what I like. So I think that's good. Take this out, put it in our bowl here. There we go. We have our Arctic char. We have our tomato vinaigrette. And we're ready for the next steps. Okay, now that we have our sauces done, our, um, our vinaigrette, our Arctic tartare, we'll season the fish, fishes. And uh, so your typical salt and pepper, of course. I love the, uh, the kosher sea salt to start with. A little pepper. And then um, Worcestershire sauce. My brother loves this. And then lemon juice. I use a half a lemon, so I'm not overpowering it, putting too much, but just enough. And then we'll take it back and we'll saute it off. With the saute pans on, the, uh, a little bit of uh, olive oil is coming up to uh, temperature, so we get a nice sear. There are two ways to go with the salmon. You can either have it with the skin on or the skin off. Nice part about using the skin on is when you saute it, the skin can stick to it, which in some cases is like, oh, that's bad, but in this case, a lot of people don't like the skin on, so when you cook it, the skin will stick onto the pan, and then you can easily use your fish spatula and take it off the pan without the skin. So I like doing it that way. My brother likes doing it that way. His customers like it that way. And if that's what his customers want, if that's what people want, that's what we do. Hear that nice sizzle there? We'll do two pieces here and the halibut without any skin. And if you noticed, I cut the, uh, the pieces of the salmon. So it's, it was a side of salmon, but I cut it in half, and this is the flap end of it, which has a ton of fat on there, a lot, a lot of flavor, but it's so thin. So I cook all those pieces separately, so they cook at the same time. Same with the halibut. I cut it in half and I cut them into uh, equal pieces. And that's what I'm looking for whenever I cook fish. It makes it easier to use, easier to move around the pan, take it out of the pan, and everything cooks at the same time. So I think that's important. It's like how I do the, uh, the chicken when I did the chicken cordon bleu in the last show. Pounded it out so it's all the same uh, thickness. The same with the pork milanese. We're doing the same thing with the fish. So it's getting a nice pop, a nice sear to it. I'll flip this over once. If you wanted to, if you really wanted to make this super, super easy, after getting a nice sear on the bottom of the skin, you could plop it into the oven, 10, 15 minutes, and you can take it out. I'm just going to take it and flip it and finish sauteing in the pan. Let's take a look at the halibut. You can see in the halibut, we got a nice, a nice little char there, nice saute. That's what I'm looking for. Again, I never want to overcook the fish. So having it like this, it's been on for about, about two minutes, three minutes. I'm going to take a look at the, uh, at the salmon and the bottom of the salmon and you can see how it's starting to cook on the bottom and there's the skin that's coming off and I like that.
I moved this to the side and that came off nicely. I'll take the skin out of the pan, move it to the side and finish with the salmon. Make sure there's plenty of oil underneath there so it doesn't stick. It slides around and I'll take the skin off. Clean as you go. Put this back on the heat, slide it around, check the halibut. So you can see that it's, it's cooked about a quarter of an inch on either side. I'll turn down the heat now so it can continue to cook and won't burn and turn this one down to a medium low heat. Take a look at the coloring on that. That's nice. Flip it back over. So if you were to take off the skin of the salmon, one, it could be a little tricky to do. Number two, you could waste a lot of the meat and you could also damage the natural texture. So that's why I like cooking salmon with the skin on if, if that's how you're buying it. If you buy it with the skin off, you don't have to worry about that. You can just cook away. But this salmon, I bought the entire side of salmon and it came with the uh, skin on. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the halibut. Flip this over. Nice coloring on this. Great coloring on that. Right? Looks pretty yummy. Put that on the heat. And these guys are almost ready. So you can press down on the fish and uh, depending on how firm it is or how it firm it's not, you can tell the degree of doneness similar to how when you're cooking beef or lamb or any kind of... Uh, starting to stick a little there so I'm going to move it around side of the pan where there's more oil. And I think I'm going to take the halibut off Take your time, haste makes waste, fold my towel so in case the handle's hot I'm not burning myself. These fish spatulas are fantastic tools to use. Take this off, turn off the heat, clean as you go. So when you look at the fish spatula it really has a, uh, a sharp edge on it so you can get in there and pick off the fish. Let's take a look at the salmon one more time and flip it over. I'll get a little more brown on the top of the fish and that's the bottom of the fish and it will look nice. And we'll take it off, flip it over, nice coloring. To me it seems like it's cooked about medium, medium rare, which is what I like. So before we plate the, uh, the halibut and the salmon, let's make our vinaigrette for our pear salad. Um, again, I like using the lemon juice uh, to start with. And I won't use any of the uh, red wine vinegar. I just like a nice, clean, fresh, uh, natural lemon juice with some good olive oil, the Calavito extra virgin olive oil. I'll get one more half. Got that. Okay. I'll add a little bit of uh, mustard to it. and then the, uh, the Calavito Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Let me mix this up first. Probably added about um, three or four tablespoons. A little salt. A little pepper. That's ready to go. Now for the pears. I bought these pears and they've been ripening up for a couple of days now. 
so they should be pretty good. They might have little bruises on it, but they are going to be nice and sweet. They've been washed. You can tell cutting through it, it's quite nice. And I'll do a rough dice cut on it. You could take the skin off, but I think you're just going to take away a lot of the nutrients. So that's ready to go. I'll put that in the vinaigrette. I will add the arugula to it and give that a nice toss, just enough to coat the arugula. Uh, the goal is never to have too much of the dressing on there. I don't want anything, when I put it on the plate, I don't want to have any extra dressing. Nice summer salad. Last part of prep work, I'm gonna make a chiffonade out of the basil. Again, with the basil leaves, you wipe down the board. I just need a few. I want the big leaves. Probably two more. There we go. Okay, stack them, roll them, and then cut them. There we go, and that's set to go. Now we can plate. Let me clean this up and make some room so I can plate it. Move these plates closer to me. Let's put on the halibut. Looks quite nice there. Two pieces side by side. Take our tomato vinaigrette, put the tomatoes on. Good coloring. Again, it's a nice summer dish. Nothing like tomatoes. A little bit of our vinaigrette. Just drizzle that on there, not too much. We'll put the salmon on. One piece, and two pieces. A little of the Arctic char on top, tartare. Capers, mayonnaise, artichokes. You can put this either on the top or the bottom, whatever you prefer. And then a little basil. We have a nice uh, salmon with an artichoke tartare, little basil. We have a halibut with a tomato vinaigrette and a pear and arugula salad. All this is great for the summertime, light, refreshing, and very healthy. I want to thank my sponsors, Little Leaf Farms and Calavito Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Thank you very much. That's the end of our second season. We'll see you next year.